Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Investing Edge. I'm Louisa Boyerson. European private equity is back on its feet after a difficult four years following the financial crisis. That's according to a new study from global law firm White & Case. Yesterday, I spoke to Ian Begshaw. He's the co-head of White & Case's EMEA private equity practice. And I spoke to him about the report. I asked him what was driving this comeback in private equity. I think the findings from the study show that uh, there's a resurgence in private equity activity. Uh, that resurgence is linked to the IPO boom, where there's a material increase in IPO activity in the course of the last 12 months. And also the number of exits from private equity funds, particularly in Europe, has led to a real boom in activity for those guys. And I think the key thing for the finding, why we think private equity is coming back to its feet, is because that boom will give rise to a fundraising round where money given back to investors will be reinvested in the industry and will help private equity sponsors go through the next investment cycle. And these are both large and small deals? All large and small deals. So the comparator of 10 years ago, the very big deals 10 years ago that take private of boots, you know, those deals are not being replicated in the market currently mm -hmm. to the same volume, although there are signs of the mega deals coming back. But the majority of the activity has been in the mid-market, which has really been the engine room of European private equity activity for the last 15 years. Yeah. What, what, what about the size of, of the actual exit, uh, the, the, the exit volumes? I mean, how, how do they look? The exit volumes look disproportionately large compared to 2009, uh, 10 and 11. We saw an increase in 12 and an explosion in 13. Larger is the liquidity in the market and the ability to raise funding for corporates to buy sponsor-backed companies, for sponsors with active funds to raise finance to buy sponsor-backed companies from each other. And ultimately the need for sponsors who'd held on to those assets for a longer time, bearing in mind their investment period is usually five years, some of the assets that are being sold have been held for seven years plus. Yeah. So there's been pent up demand and the liquidity in the market has released that demand like a cork out of a bottle. And that's why you've seen an explosion of activity first quarter this year, which essentially kicks through from the second half of last year, because these transactions are always reported six months after they start. What are your thoughts on, uh, on the notion that leveraged buyouts that are taking place via the likes of KKR, Carlyle, Apex, that they aren't at the forefront and instead you're seeing a lot of entrepreneurial spirit out there taking the place of, of, of the larger companies? I think that's a trend that's been in the US for the last decade. Um, you know, and, and in reality, the U.S. investor model has been really a character-led investor model. And you're starting to see that come back in Europe, particularly where you've got either large families in uh, uh, stable economies like Germany, or you've got basically originators of wealth outside the Eurozone who are looking to basically reinvest wealth created in businesses that have been built up since the Berlin Wall came down. So there's a wave of cash in relation to European entrepreneurs which the European lending market is happy to support and more often than not at this point in time those guys are confident simple decision makers and often taking advantage of opportunities to really make a uh, strategic acquisition. We're just looking at a chart here on European buyouts from 2009 to, uh, to 2013. Just talk us through what, what it is that we're seeing here. So what you saw in 2009 uh, was the low point of buy activity over the course of the last decade. So in relation to seven, the activity continued on you know, after the crash as a kind of afterburn into 2008. It really died in 8 and basically was very low in 9. And then 10 and 11, there was a resurgence in the debt markets which fueled activity. But the companies that were being sold were the real dual companies, the easy to sell companies. Yeah. And then in 12 and 13, you're seeing again a stabilization of basically value of deals being sold because the figures are not being distorted by mega deals that can increase the value of the deal flow without necessarily increasing the volume. Yeah. And you're seeing a huge volume of activity now, whereas the mid-market is dominating European P activity. What are you seeing with regards to buyout destinations as well, in particular in Europe? Well, the UK is still the king. Uh, many factors give rise to that. I think the disposition to buyouts is, uh, is high in the UK. The ability of finance in relation to UK headquartered businesses is high. Mm -hmm. And actually a lot of the companies that were restructured in Europe 
you know, have a European headquarters as a result of the debt restructuring they undertook. So in terms of uh, figures, the UK is high at the moment. The growth countries will really be Germany and the Nordics. So in terms of our statistics, France, surprisingly high, but there the confidence is coming back. In Germany and uh, Italy and Spain, there's always a la large volume of low-value buyouts, yeah. but increasingly in Germany and the Nordics, there'll also be a larger volume of high-value buyouts in the next 18 months. Well, Brazil's central bank left interest rates